Hey everybody, it's Wellness Wednesdays. This has turned out to be my favorite day of the week. Um, after what seems like an endless week, um, I get to come here in the middle of the week and spend time with you guys. So we're so excited to be here again for Wellness Wednesdays, 15 minutes with your virtual pharmacist, um, I'm so excited here. Um, we know that we're really creating this platform so that we can come together as women and just talk about some healthy, practical tips for us to uh, incorporate in our everyday lives. So I'm so happy to be here with you guys. I'm Dr. Marcy Lynn Ross, the founder of Edlin Essentials. And tonight I have here professional makeup artist, Quandra Lee here to discuss ways for us as women, especially women over 35, to have younger, healthier looking skin. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Thank you for having me. I'm excited. We have some people on already. Hey, K Kanisha, Kenyatta. We are so excited about this. Um, we're so happy to have you here. I know on last Wednesday, we had uh, Shanae Hayes here who helped us understand about just how to beautify using your make using makeup. Um, hey, Shanae, she's actually- Hey, so Shanae. <laughs> so we're here for part two. Um, hey, Charity. That's right, that's right. So. Um, Quandra's here. She's going to really help us. Um, she's actually not only uh, a makeup artist, but actually a master esthetician and a wax trainer. Yes. And so Quandra's going to be here to help us. Uh, we all know we want youthful, radiant looking skin, um, but there's a lot that we really don't understand about the skin. So can you just explain, give us some characteristics of the skin and how it, um, the differences between where our skin is, whether it's on our face or our hands or our feet and how they differentiate. Sure, so thank you for having me and thank you all for tuning in. Um, I'm just gonna jump right in and get to it because of time limitations. So the skin is the largest organ of the body and it's the most important because it's our protector, right? It helps to keep, it's the barrier that keeps the, the, the germs and bacteria from entering our body causing disease and that kind of thing. So the thinner layers are the eyelids and the lips and the thicker layers of our skin is the hands and the and the, the palm of the hands and the soles of the feet. So they're more protected. You notice they're tougher. They can take a little more. But these areas are thinner and, you know, uh, we want to protect that more. That's great. That's great. Yeah, we definitely do. And we don't we think we know. I always say we always hear that the saying black don't crack you know <laughs> but if you don't take care of it right you know it will you can really see uh damage to your skin if Absolutely. you don't take care of it Absolutely. Um, and so i know as unfortunately as we get older we do lose elasticity our yeah. skin becomes drier and then you start to see the wrinkles yeah um, start to develop and even hyperpigmentation right Absolutely. um so uh what are some factors that can cause this and how can we help prevent it especially if of different ethnicities sure absolutely so with age we start to lose some of that elastin right and that collagen that keeps us nice and plump so we want to make sure that we have good home care routines to help keep that uh the the i guess you could say the aging process can help slow it down and be more preventive um you'll notice lighter skin tones such as like redheads um, fair skinned individuals, they'll develop aging a lot quicker than people of darker persuasion like blacks and Hispanics. Um, and it, it all uh, relates to the melanin playing a part in that. But even though we tend to have more melanin, we still can get the sun damage. So not to get that confused, but it does slow our aging process. And some things that can cause that is what I mentioned before, loss of elasticity, um, expression lines. So think once you, when you're an infant, as you're going through time and age, you are talking more, you're expressing yourself more. So over time, those things are being worn out. So your smile lines, you'll see crease in this area. Your um, when you're quenching your eyes, you'll see that's where the wrinkles and fine lines form around here. So all of that comes over time with age. Um, and it affects us differently based on our skin tone, genetics, background and that kind of thing. So one of the things, you know, especially 
around, you know, when you're in your thirties, you have like your regimen, you have the things that you like to use in terms of cleansing, moisturizing, exfoliating and protecting your skin. Yeah. So can you share with us some of the tips that we have in each of these categories so that we can adjust some of this, our regimen that, you know, we have, well, I've always done this, this is what I've done. Wow. Um, and sometimes we may be resistant to change and really not understanding that, you know, until you see an older picture of yourself, you're like, okay, <laughs> I did. <laughs> I am aging. In fact, um, I know. So Shanae saying, teach Quandra. I know that's right. Um, we all, Tuki and Shanae says she, they love their melanin. Yeah. And uh, Kenyatta gave us a great compliment and said that, you know, 35 and older, we look 25. But Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Until we see a picture of ourselves, 25, oh, right, right. right? So how can you tell us in terms of our, you know, just starting out with a cleanser and then we can move to some and how often we should cleanse and give us some feedback on how we should change some of our regimen. Sure, absolutely. So you want to be sure to cleanse twice a day, morning at night. So in the morning, you may want to use more of a, if your skin is drier, you want to use a creamier uh, cleanser to help hydrate your skin throughout the day. In the evening, you want to use something more gel-like. That's going to take care to, uh, to take away the impurities and you know the day's damage from your skin. And then as you're sleeping, you're like restoring your skin. So the way I look at it is, in the daytime, I protect my skin, and at night, I treat my skin. Okay. Does that make sense? It so, does. It does. I never thought about having to use a cl different cleanser for the morning and then for the evening. That's yeah, a really, because, really good tip. Because you're having dryness, right? We're losing um, water loss as we continue to age and our skin is drier. There's lack of elasticity. So we want that more emollient product to help plump us up and give us that more youthful look. You may need um, heavier creams as moisturizers to hydrate and protect your skin throughout the day. Um, so those are the things that are gonna protect you as you go out into the world of pollutions and you know just everything around us environmental uh damage that's happening to us the minute we step out the door and then at night you want to clean that so that you're washing those impurities off and you're rejuvenating your skin as you're resting your body and then what about moisturizer so now that we've clean cleaned our skin um and healed it at night so what in terms of and we should do that twice a day Absolutely. so what about moisturizers during the day so I know some people may say, oh, well, my skin is oily, so I don't put a moisturizer on. You still need to moisturize your skin. You have to protect that outer layer of skin so that it can protect you. And what's happening is you want to use a product that's going to, uh, if your skin is oily, you don't need it to be a thicker moisturizer. You can use something thinner, but yet it's still hydrating and protective. If your skin is on a drier side, then that's when you do want something more emollient, meaning thicker, um, not quite a Vaseline type of feel, but a good in between from just uh, a really thin feel and a thicker feel. I can't quite describe it, but it's a texture thing. Sorry. <laughs> you want to make sure that if so, put it this way: if you're using something and your skin is dry, like it's very windy right now, so our skin can really dry out very easily. You want to use something thicker because this wind is hitting against your skin, right? So you can even go from leaving your house and getting to work. If you take public transportation, by the time you get to work, you feel like your face is cracking. Maybe your products aren't protecting your skin enough against the, the uh, weather. So you want to look for something more emollient. That's a good point. And I never thought about having a moisturizer for the different weather. Like you Absolutely. think about having something for different seasons, but not really thinking about the change that the fluctuation in the actual weather. Yeah. Um, one thing Kenyatta mentioned was about combination skin. Mm -hmm. And I think um, her question may have been pertaining to cleansers, um, but I guess it also is about for uh, moisturizers as well. Like what should you look for for somebody who has combination skin? So again, for combination, if you are oily in what we call the T-zone, which is this area here, mm -hmm. then you may need two different things. So, you know, there isn't one treatment that applies to every person. So you want to use a treatment that's going to apply specifically to you and your skin type. So it may be that if you're oily here, you use the gel. If you're okay. dry here, then you use the, um, the creamy cleanser 
and treat each area accordingly. So okay. it's not a one size fit all. And it really is best if you take the time to find what works for your face to best protect your face. So it's worth it. It may seem like, oh, two different products, but it's worth it. And then Cassandra asked about cleansers as well. And then we'll move on to exfoliation um, that uh, she has heard you know, something different that you should cleanse at night and then rinse in the morning. Um, is that something that you think is that just for maybe a mask or is that something that's for? Um, uh, and I, and I, I'm wondering if you are uh, using a different uh, cleanser. Um, or is that something that's for overnight that you rinse off and then put your moisturizer on in the morning? Like, so what do you think in terms of? Absolutely. So you want to cleanse at night, right? And as you're cleansing at night, again, you're taking off the impurities from the day, right? But you're also treating at night. So what I treat with at night could be vitamin A, retinols, things like that. I don't want to have those products on during the daytime because my skin is more sensitive to the UVA and UVB rays. So that's why you want to cleanse because after you've restored it that night, you want to rinse that off and then protect it for the day. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Um, and so just especially in the interest of times, I know we can go. Is this a small time? Do they really... <laughs> You know, there's a lot of questions when it comes to, you know, our skin. Um, so what about exfoliation? So we know that for cleansing, we should do that twice a day for moisturizing, obviously, every day. And then for exfoliating, um, tell us about that. So I recommend exfoliating at least two to three times a week, depending on the level of exfoliation. If you have something very granular, then you want to do it less. Because what you want to do, the purpose of exfoliating is sloughing off the dead skin cells. So say if you notice, oh, my skin is looking dry and dull. Well, that's where exfoliation comes in. But it also helps to help your cell turnover. And what that means is as we age, our skin regrowth slows down. Like we naturally shed, but it slows down as we age. So exfoliating helps to rejuvenate that. And so the old skin is coming off and new skin is coming through at a faster pace if we're exfoliating regularly, which also contributes to help keeping that youthful look. So you want to have a good exfoliation routine. So now, um, and I know we're running short on time, so, but I want to ask this question because it's something that I wonder. So should we, when we think about exfoliating, um, how should we should we use one with lemon? Should we, you know, because I know lemon is a lightener, you know, and so what should we look for in the exfoliant? So when you're exfoliating, if you're dealing with dry, dull skin, you want to use something that is textured, like jojoba bees are very safe. And you can mix that with a uh, lemon or you can do coconut oil and uh, baking soda, things like that. And so that's going to allow the, uh, the texture is what's going to slough off the dead skin cells, but you're still using something to hydrate it at the same time. If you're dealing with like acne, and you have uh, bumps and things on your chin and your, your uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Your head, your forehead. Then you want something more clay, like a clay mask, which is going to dry up those impurities and pull them out. And then that's going to help clear your skin up as well. Okay, so we have two questions coming in. Tuki asked a question about how often um, should she um, use a facial or a peel? Because we okay. talked about the so regimen facials, work. If you have great skin, I say get a facial quarterly. If you have issues or concerns, I say get a pill quarterly. If you have, I'm sorry, if you have reg, um, great skin, you can get pills quarterly as well. If you have issues or concerns, you need to consult with an esthetician and create a plan to help take care of those issues or concerns. So if it's just uh, dry skin or dull skin due to aging and you just want that more useful glow, then you may want to do a series of pills, three pills in every three weeks is what I usually recommend for my guests. And in that time, I'm putting them on a good home care regimen so that they're continuing the regimen after the pills. Okay. Um, and then uh, Nico, I think we, a we answered this question for Nico. Hey, Nico, thanks for joining us um, about the baking soda. Um, yeah. baking soda um, and you definitely water. can exfoliate with baking soda and water. Um, so what that will do is it will draw out the impurities. It is a drying product, so you don't want to use it daily, but it does work. Um, you also can use baking. Baking soda is a lightener, so be mindful that it's a lightening agent as well. So say if you have hyperpigmentation you want to clear up, 
is great for that. Just pay attention to your skin and how it's responding and that can determine how often you can use it. So I would say start maybe twice a week and see how your skin is responding. You don't want to overuse it and cause an adverse effect. Okay. Well, thank you, Quandra. We, we, this has been so useful. I know we could stay here all night. I have been working very hard to stay the 15 minutes. So if you can um, just tell us how to reach you, if they have any follow-up questions, please, please, please reach out to Quandra. She is amazing. Um, if you have any questions in terms of makeup, reach out to Shawnee. They are amazing. They are here to help us stay fabulous as we age. We want to do this thing great uh, all the way through. I always say healthy is the new beautiful. And so we can yeah eat ourselves from the inside out but also use um you know things like our makeup and our skin care to help us yeah. beautify i know that's shanae's word and i just love it <laughs> so just tell us how to reach you absolutely so i can be reached uh at quandralee.com or you can email me at info at quandralee.com as well as i can be reached on instagram quandralee mua or facebook quandralee makeup and skin care so however you want to reach out to me, I'll be sure to get back to you. I love helping people with their skin. So feel free to contact me. Any questions, concerns, even for consultations, I'm happy to help. Awesome. Thank you. So guys, we had another great episode. This has just been a phenomenal experience for, for me, I know, just to connect with other women to have this platform so we can share tips. Um, and the only thing we always ask, you guys are always so engaging. I absolutely love it. Yes. Now make sure that you share this. Share this so that you can be that vehicle to help another woman get these tips and to stay fabulous. So yeah. have a great day. Remember our hashtag best life and remember healthy is a new beautiful. See you guys next week. Thanks, Quandra. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Of course, my technology is all off today. <laughs>